would think that most, most of you would be smiling. How would you like to be living in Japan right now? Uh, you know, Japan has suffered a, a, a major earthquake, and uh, I forgot exactly how much the, the, the island itself has actually moved. And uh, they have they've suffered a, a tsunami where a 28-foot wall of water uh, came and invaded the coastal cities. And they're dealing with, with both the uh, the effects of the earthquake. They're still dealing with that. Some of, of them are, uh, some of the aftershocks are, are almost as bad as the original quake itself. And the tsunami has left uh, a lot of people isolated and, and uh, in, in, in bad situations. And if that's not enough, if a, if a quake and a, a tsunami is not bad enough, uh, they're sitting on a powder keg with a nuclear reactor that's about to melt down. And, and cause no telling what kind of problems. And they're, I'm, I don't know whether they're even sure about the other reactors that are on the, the island of Japan and whether they're stable or whether they have control of them. But right now, those people will have a, a situation that, uh, that would make them or should make them be very uh, uh, apprehensive about uh, uh, the, the days to come. And here we are sitting in middle Tennessee uh, fat and sassy on a, a, a day that uh, is not bad out there. It, it's, it, it's, the sun is shining, partly cloudy. Typical Tennessee uh, day, a 30% chance of rain. And, and here we are sitting in, in, a, in a climate controlled uh, a building that, and, uh, and we, we think we've got it bad. Now don't. Well, we look like we think we've got it bad. And uh, <laughs> the, the one thing that, uh, that surprises me is that, is that uh, even in a situation where uh, the Japanese now find themselves, some of them still have positive outlooks when you hear them talk. They still have positive outlooks about that. Now, it's kind of hard to think about positive when your island, when the, your island home has moved and water's invaded it and, and buildings have, have crashed down to rubble and a nuclear reactor is set, set to melt down. That's kind of a bad situation. But having a positive attitude. Folks, Christians, if you are a Christian this morning and you know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you should have one of the most positive attitudes of anyone in the world. Amen. In fact, you should be able to smile and laugh in the face of any adversity that this world might cause at you. And you should be that strong in your faith and your knowledge of Jesus. There's one verse of scripture that I want you to look at this morning. It's found in John, the 16th chapter. And it's verse 33. That's the only one we're going to look at. When Andy puts it up on the screen, we're just going to leave it there until, until we get through because that's the only verse of Scripture we're going to look at. And some of you, did anybody know it by heart? John 16, 33? I bet you do. You just don't know. You just don't remember the Scripture. But when I read it to you or when you read it, you're going to say, Oh, I knew that. Listen to what it says. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. Here's where the good part comes. But be of good cheer, because I have overcome the world. Do you remember that verse of Scripture now? You should. And it should comfort you every single day of your life. It should, be a, it should be our motto, our, our uh, objective, our theme, our mission statement. That we are going to be of good cheer because Jesus has overcome the world. Most of us would probably say that it's at some point in our life, or maybe even in the, in the, in the time that we're living now, that, that it's like living in a combat zone. 
You never know what the world is going to, to throw at us. Our, uh, our military in, in Afghanistan and in Iraq and in, the, in some of the places in, in the, that they have been in the past few years have, uh, have dealt with a, a lot of things. They've uh, dip, uh, dealt with improvised explosive devices. They've dealt with, uh, uh, with snipers. And, and sometimes we as, uh, as, uh, as people feel that, that sometimes we just walk into situations and, and it just blows up in our face. And have you ever had that to happen to you? That you are, uh, you're dealing with something and, and then all of a sudden you think that everything is going just fine and, and that things are going to work out and all of a sudden you, you know, you, you watch these uh, war movies and, and uh, you know, they'll be walking down and, and uh, down a path and all of a sudden they'll, they'll hear a click and they stop. What have they just done? They just stepped on a landmine. They heard that click. Now what's about to happen? You're fixing to disappear. The odds on you surviving this are slim to none. Because when that click happened, that thing armed. Now they're, you, they might be nice to you, and uh, the click is all, is all that there is. The bad thing comes when you remove your foot. You know, that, that, that's, when, that's when things get kind of rough, is when you remove your foot. But now, if they're really bad to you, you know, you might have a chance of, of, uh, of somebody kind of sneaking in there and maybe, maybe helping you out a little bit. Wouldn't count on it too much, though. But they may be bad to you. And instead of, uh, you know, when that click happens, not only if you remove your foot will the thing blow up, You've just done what? You've just activated a time. And in a few minutes or a few seconds, you're going to disappear. We feel like that a lot of times in situations. And, and sometimes we get into, into situations where, where we think everything is just going just fine. And, and we're strolling down the pathway of life. And all of a sudden, we hear a click. And things begin to start rolling through our head. How am I going to get out of this? If I take my foot off, it's going to blow up. If I know it's going to blow up. Usually things in our world today when, that we face blow up in our faces. We, and, and we have to deal. We wind up dealing with it. What about snipers? You know, Satan is out there and he's looking for people who are vulnerable. Have you ever thought about how vulnerable we are? Really? Y'all get nervous? Is this paranoia or what? Uh, do, do you get nervous when you're uh, walking down a, 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 a street? You, you look you look behind you, especially in a, a bad part of town, you know, that has a bad reputation, and you, you start looking behind you, you start looking around and seeing who's going to get you and who, who's not. Satan is out there, folks. Satan is out there, and his, his little demons have their sniper rifles uh, trained on every person in this world. And they're looking for the best opportunity that they can find to deal a, a, a blow. Maybe it's not a deadly blow, but maybe it's just a blow to you. So we face uh, uh, the IEDs, we face uh, uh, snipers in our, in our world today as we live. But Jesus said this. He said, folks, it, it's going to happen. He says it in that verse of Scripture. It's going to happen. But here's one thing that you need to keep in mind. Be of good cheer because I have overcome. If you are a Christian this morning, you need to be of good cheer because your Savior has overcome the world. And even though we live in a combat zone, we can have peace that, that passes all understanding. The peace that comes from knowing Jesus Christ and having Him in our lives. In this last uh, uh, verse, last sentence of one of Christ's final sermons, he gives us some, some guiding principles for inner peace. We're going to look at them. It's all in that verse of Scripture there. 
Look at the words, in me you may have peace. Some would argue that the two words in me, now this is Christ making that statement, in me. Some would argue that this is the most powerful phrase in the Bible. Paul kind of used it as his theme. 